Today for Dirty Linen's summer series, we are heading to New York. We're also going back in time. A number of years ago, uh, my producer Rob Locke took his recording device to Russ and Daughters to have a chat to Nikki Russ Federman about this iconic New York institution. It's a deli, it's been there since 1914, and we thought it was great to get back into the archives and unearth this gem because it's been such a devastating period for restaurants in New York. Hundreds of restaurants have closed permanently and we really don't know what the fallout's going to be. Russ and Daughters is trucking on, they're well placed to do takeaway and delivery, but it's really lovely to hear what an important restaurant this is to New Yorkers and indeed to people who visit it from all over the world. I hope you enjoy. My name is Nikki Russ Fetterman, and I'm the fourth generation of Russ and Daughters on New York's Lower East Side. Russ and Daughters started about 100 years ago uh, by my great-grandfather. He was a, an Eastern European immigrant. I came to the States in about 1906, and as with m most immigrants at the time, they went from Ellis Island to the Lower East Side, which was um, really at that point sort of the immigrant ghetto. Um, he started with a push cart on Orchard Street, which is just around the corner from where we are now. And that was at the time the main marketplace of the Lower East Side, and business was done on the street off of carts. Everyone was, people were peddling their wares. And he sold um, typical. Eastern European Jewish fair, uh, which was, they were things like belly locks, which is salt cured salmon, pickled herring, salt cured herring. So anyway, my great grandfather, his name was Joel Russ, or Yoel Russ, um, and when he had enough money to open a shop, it was originally around the corner on Orchard Street, and then he expanded to um, the shop we have now on East Houston, right around the corner. And, um, you know, it's still a very small boutique shop. We uh, are still have stayed true to the, um, the way of doing shopping on the Lower East Side, which is a small, intimate environment, um, not a big superstore. Appetizing is actually a term for the kind of food that we sell, which is smoked fish, um, herring, cream cheeses, and candies. Because according to Jewish dietary law, you need to separate meat from dairy and fish. So delicatessen, or deli, is actually is uh, for meat products. Today, people use deli as just a you know, catch-all phrase, but really, appetizing and deli were two uh, counterparts. Today, Russ and Daughters is probably one of the only um, appetizing shops left in New York. And the same uh, thing we've seen also with delicatessens. Today, there are maybe a handful of, of real kind of traditional delis left in New York. The musts are certainly any of the smoked salmons. Um, we have about eight different kinds of smoked salmon. Each one is very distinct. It's kind of like wine, you know, depending upon what the salmon is eating, what, what water it's in, how it's smoked. They're very unique. So trying any of the smoked salmons. Um, the other smoked fish that are just delicious, herring, oh, sorry, uh, white fish, sturgeon, sable. The smoking process imparts and brings out the best in these kinds of fish. And herring is also a must-have. Um, but the classic, you know, the classic way to do it, the, the real New York experience is to get one of our bagels that are hand-rolled, water-boiled, so made by hand, um, with some of the cream cheese that's all natural and, you know, whipped, double whipped, and then some smoked salmon on top. And that's the classic New York sandwich. We know our, a lot of our customers, not just them, we know their parents, their grandparents, their kids. It used to be that our clientele was about 95% Jewish. Today, that's, it's really uh, a complete mixed bag, a uh, really diverse group of customers. 
uh, because the Lower East Side has become really kind of international and young um, and hip. So we're seeing just the you know the old school customers and then the new school. So it's a great vibe. Well, I've been coming here for about four years since I moved to the neighborhood. When I was first looking at an apartment here, I got off the train and I saw Russian Daughters and I love salmon. So I knew this would be my neighborhood. So I took the apartment and one of the first places I came when I got this was right here. And so I met Nikki then and I just love the place. Uh, I tried a bunch of different salmon uh, fillets and uh, just decided this is going to be my weekend place. And I've been coming ever since. The only time I really hate this place is around holidays because it's packed. I can never get in. A story that I think sort of um, embodies the Russ and Daughters experience. A big black limo pulled up one day. The windows were tinted. And we have a lot of celebrity um, customers. So we kind of looked out of the window and we, when we saw this li the, the limo and we figured it was some big star and not, not an unusual occurrence. But when the doors opened, it, out came this really old, frail man. And he was in a wheelchair, had an oxygen, and he had a nurse's aid, and he was sort of surrounded by family. And they took him out of the, the car and brought him in. And he could hardly speak. He was really, um, looked like he was not doing well at all. And our manager, Herman, who's been here for 26 years, said to the, um, the person who turned out to be the son of the old gentleman, he said, I, I feel like I know him. And the son said, really? Can you go and say hello? Please, can you just go and say hello? And Herman said, Okay, sure. Well, you know, what's his name? He said, and the son said, his name is Mo. Please just go and say hello to Mo. So Herman walks out from behind the counter, and they had already, um, they were in front of the store on the street, and he went up to Mo and said, Mo, how are you? It's Herman. And I, he said, I, I, I recognize you. I remember your face. And Mo, who couldn't speak at this point, just lit up. His face just really, his eyes just opened up. And uh, he was just so happy. So Herman comes back into the, s into the store, and Mo's son and daughter-in-law were there, and they said, you don't know what you just did. You don't know the mitzvah, the good deed that you just did. They said, Mo is terminal, and he's about to die. And his dying wish was to come to Russ and Daughters one last time. So we decided to pull out all the stops and rent this limo and make a whole, you know, a whole day out of it. So that, to me, sort of embodies the fact that it's more than just like bagels and locks here. There's, there's a whole other um, something else going on that people connect to. So th I'd say that's a highlight. Every day there's some, something like that that happens where someone starts to tell us about, they come in here and they start to cry because it reminds them of you know, their childhood and their grandmother who used to come here or you know, someone who left New York when they were a kid and moved to Iowa and felt disconnected from their roots and, and then they come back here and they're just so happy to see that we're still here and they can, and there's something very powerful about food, like I think food elicits so many memories and images and so when people have this food it's not just like, it's not just delicious but they're, they're tapping into something very personal and communal, so yeah, it feels good. It's hard work, but it feels good. <laughs> there are fewer and fewer places like Russ and Daughters left where people can, people come here looking for a real New York experience, but then when they get here, we're one of the few institutions or historic places that are left.
So it's kind of sad for us to see it, and it, New Yorkers now are really becoming more aware um, and nostalgic for the way it was, but I feel like the tipping point has already happened. So it, anyway, it makes being here and my decision to come back and keep it going that much more fulfilling, is to be able to give people a place where they can come and feel like, oh, this is New York. You know, I had a real experience here that it's hard to find, I think. This is Dirty Linen and I'm Danny Vallant. We air the issues that the hospitality industry finds hard to talk about. We spend a week thrashing around each issue, hearing from different people with unique perspectives. We want to hear from you as well. If you have something that needs to be said about a topic, get in touch so we can include your perspective. Contact us at dirtylinen at deepintheweeds.com.au or hit us up on Insta at Dirty Linen Podcast. We can't wait to hear from you. This is a Deep in the Weeds production.